Please don't throw games in the spawn. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Salosa and this is Unit Lost. And I have been playing on an account which is a, well, it's my lowest level account. It is 3.6k. This is much lower than I usually play the game at. However, I have been stuck on this account for days in the same level range and it is driving me crazy. And you know why? Because the team always give up in the goddamn spawn. It is so frustrating. So I need to try and do something to help this out. So let's just talk about me and what I've been doing. So I've been playing on my other accounts, right? So generally, at my highest account is 4.2k. All my other accounts are around 4k, right? So I'm playing in GM and master, high master games, generally with a lot of GM players in them. In those games, right, now sometimes this does happen in those games where people will just be like, whatever, I don't care, I'm not getting my favourite hero so I'm going to throw the game or I'm going to troll, that happens everywhere. But the key difference is, at that level, people will build a team that's coherent and a team that works. We're not just talking building a team because it's meta, we're talking building a team based off the plays we've got. However, at the lower level where I'm playing at this sort of mid-master level, it is absolutely rife. So it can, I, I can only assume this happens at all the levels below low and it just happens more often and it is really really frustrating because I came very close to just not wanting to play Overwatch I was like I can't what is going on this is so bad I'd win a game and it would be a fine game then I'd lose a game because the team decided that they wanted to roll a crazy team composition or people would argue over what heroes and if they wouldn't get their hero it generally was a Genji can I have the Genji the other Genji player would say no then that player would say okay I'm throwing the game at which point I'd say well maybe just pick somebody else you can play and they just throw abuse at me and it was happening all of the time now you know me guys i'm not going to show people's names i'm not going to show any footage from any of these games because i do record all of my games but i don't want to go out there and name and shame people because this is a larger issue we need to know we need to understand how to play together as a team and that First and foremost, does not mean simply picking a team because it's meta or shitting on somebody because they've picked a hero that you don't think is going to work. Right, let's look at some examples of this. So there's probably two ways of looking at this. The first one is you just lock in a hero and say, whatever, I'm going to play this hero because it's my best hero. I don't care what's going on in the game. Now, that's fine and that's all well and good. However, there will be times where you will need to flex onto a different hero to complement the team and you will be surprised how effective this will be. Now, you know what I am like, guys. I like to be flexible. What I tend to do is lock in the hero I want first and then I wait to see what the team is selecting. Then if somebody asks me for the hero I've selected, I give it to them. However, I also look at the team and think, all right, maybe I should swap my hero because it's not going to work in this team build. So what we're going to do is look at loads of team comps here, and I'm going to explain to you the reasoning which goes on in my head for me to select different heroes in the spawn and also to try and build a team that's not going to instantly throw or just be, you know, not a good cohesive team. The team has to work together and it needs to be strong. So the very first thing you want to do is you really want to check the profiles of the people who haven't selected heroes in your game, right? It's very easy to do this. Check the profile. Look at what heroes they play. If you've got a guy who has got 150 hours on Soldier 76, yet you've got another guy in your team who's locked in as Soldier 76, and he happens to have, let's say, 100 hours on Soldier, but also 100 hours on Anna, and you really need an Anna, maybe say to that guy, will you play Anna? We've got a Soldier main. That is a way of being diplomatic and helping the team form a unit which is going to work because you want everybody on their best hero you don't want arguments and the only way to do this is to check everybody's profile when you go into a game so get into the habit of doing it it's a very very good habit okay let's take a look at some team builds so this is a team which has been selected for the attack on king's row so you've got me on the soldier 76 you've got a tracer you have a mercy you've got a lucio a winston and a genji this is dive comp but it's not a complete completely solid dive comp so the whole idea of this is to get into the enemy's bat line really quick look at my pick look at my soldier 76 probably not the most ideal pick for the attack right think about who i could be and what i could do to change up my hero to benefit the team who could i play in this instance now i want you guys to answer this or in your head maybe not in the comments but answer it in your head before i give you the answer to this who would you select here who would work with a tracer with a winston and with a Genji extremely well. Because right now, my soldier pick, what can it really benefit? Like, there's no real alt synergy there off anybody I can benefit with. There's no Ana to give me the, the nano visor. Uh, and yeah, what could I do? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pick Zarya. And you know why I'll play Zarya? It's quite simple, because Zarya is going to suit this team much better than a Soldier 76 would. She can 
Bubble the Tracer, she can also Graviton for the Tracer Black Hole Bomb combo, which is massively strong. She can Bubble the Winston as he dives in, which is massively strong. And she can Bubble the Genji while he uses his ultimate and while he dives in. She is a much better pick. And we've got Genji and a Tracer. They are going to dive into the back line and they're going to do damage with the Winston. The Lucio is going to go in there fast. I'm going to get in there with the Zarya. I'm going to supplement with shields and barriers. Then I'm going to get my Graviton. I can drop that down and Tracer can kill everyone. Or even Genji could use his Dragon Blade. So can you see how me playing Zarya there is much better than me playing Soldier 76. It is a much more effective pick for that team's composition. So let's take a look at King's Row on defense. Now look what the team have done here. Um, I wanted to play Widowmaker because I was feeling Widowmaker. However, we've got a Tracer, we've got a Mercy, we've got a Lucio, we've got a Zarya, and we've got a Genji. What are we missing here? What is King's Row first point all about on defense? Well, it's about holding the point, right? Who is the best tank by far on that area of the map on defense? It is Reinhardt. You could maybe say, yeah, you might be able to use an Orisa, but it is Reinhardt, yeah? That is who I need to play right now. Now, why I need to play that is because I know the map we're on. I know what we need to defend the map. So that's what I'm going to do. If I take that Widowmaker, now this is what happens all of the time in Midmasters. So like I said at the start of this video, it must happen at lower levels. That person who wanted to play the Widow would just play the Widow. This team is very vulnerable. The enemy can just walk in and do damage to you. The problem with the first point of King's Row is if you don't have the protection of a barrier, they will get picks on you, right? And it's longer for you to get back to the fight. They can just run back to the fight really quick. It doesn't matter if they die. It doesn't matter if they don't even have a Reinhardt. They're probably going to go dive comp because everybody goes dive comp these days, but whatever. We need a Reinhardt right now, so I'm going to play the Reinhardt or possibly an Orisa, but me being a Reinhardt player, I would take the Reinhardt. So that builds an effective team. And guess what? This team easily held the first point and we won the game, no problem. Okay, next up we're on Dorado. And what we need to look at here is what's going on with the team. This is Dorado attack. And I'm on the Soldier 76. We've got an Ana, so this is great. This means I can be nano boosted. Me as the Soldier, all I'm really going to do all game is ask for the nano boost. Then we've got an Orisa. Uh, could be questionable. This could be something where people will go, get off the Orisa, take the Reinhardt. I would not say that straight away. It doesn't matter if you think Reinhardt is better than Orisa. I think Reinhardt is much better than Orisa. However, if that person wants to play Orisa, you let them play it, right? If it doesn't work then hopefully they'll change but you don't force them into changes because you've still got the barrier you've still got that front line you've still got that payload protection as it moves through the map and that's what you need to generally get through the first point of Dorado because it's not that great for dive comp dive comp can work on it but we're talking about ladder play here so it requires quite a lot of coordination usually you want the Reinhardt barrier to walk through the choke you know and then you just push through that way so Arissa kind of okay we've got Zen right now Zen I think is really really strong Zen is really good in this little comp we've got right now because he can put the orb on the Genji and the Genji can go away and do whatever he likes and Anna is there to heal the rest of the team. So can you see how I work this through in my head? Like this is what I'm always thinking about when I'm looking at the, the team builds. Also as well, like I said earlier on, I am checking the profiles of these players to see what they want to play. The question is though, what is that person going to do at the end? What should that person play? If you are that person and you look at this team, you're thinking, okay, we've only got one tank. Now, generally taking one tank might not be the best idea, right? So maybe if you're a tank player, you're going to pick up a Roadhog at this point. You could potentially pick up a Zarya, but I would be more inclined to pick up a Roadhog. Reason for that is we're going through a very small choke on the first point attack on Dorado. So we want to pump damage into their Reinhardt barrier or whoever the hell they've got there. Or maybe we get a cheeky hook or something through the low ground, like under the bridge and we kill them. That would be awesome. That would be a great pick. It'd be better than Zarya because it'll probably do more effective damage than Zarya. Also, Zarya can be a bit problematic on Dorado because Zarya is not that great on maps with a load of verticality. Um, she's great when everyone's up in her face and she's just fighting you straight up but when she's not it can be a bit of an issue you could argue that under the choke yes on the first point Zarya could be okay um however like I said in this team build I'd be looking at the Roadhog definitely at the Roadhog you could also go crazy and maybe go Reinhardt for double barriers but it depends on what that player wants to do now I can't remember what this player did but what I am going to say is if that player selected a DPS like a McCree, which would be a pretty bad pick given this team, I would say, I would then swap to a Reinhardt or I'd swap to a Roadhog, probably a Roadhog, yeah, as I discussed, because I think that would work better in this team. That is how you have to be flexible. Like, you cannot just pick whoever you like. I mean, like, that person there could pick a Widowmaker, could pick a Farah. We could go triple DPS. Maybe that, it could work. It, it, you know, you never know what might, might not work until you try it. 
but you have to think about what's going to be the most cohesive and effective team. That player also could be an amazing Farrah player. Like if it's a really good Farrah player, then you want it on Farrah. You know what I mean? But the only way you really know if you're a great player is if you go to a website called Overbuff or you go to Master Overwatch and you're in the top 100 for that player. If you are, well, for that hero, if you are, then yeah, you probably do have a case for playing that hero, whatever the cost. But let's be honest, that's hardly any of us, ladies and gentlemen. So don't just think, yes, I'm the best Genji main ever, but I'm in Platinum. I should always be playing Genji. No, sometimes you shouldn't be playing Genji if the enemy have got like a Winston and a Zarya and they're absolutely murdering you, then you should probably swap. All right, let's take a look at another example. So this is being aware of what the enemy team have got, what your team have, and how you can beat the enemy team with complete just counter picks. Because I've got to be honest, guys, most games of Overwatch are simply won because you have a better team composition than the enemy. It is only at the very highest levels where team compositions become kind of homogenized. So they become the same, where the much better players, like say if you have a godly 76, will destroy the enemy 76 and win the game. That's where that sort of real super high level play comes in, or the, those players really make the difference. But beyond that, it just comes down to team composition. I look at this right, right away and I start laughing. I'm looking at the enemy team and I'm like, right, they've got a Winston. All right, that's okay. They've got a Zarya to bubble the Winston. That's okay. They've got a Soldier 76 for general DPS. That's fine. They've got an Anna who's going to nano boost the Soldier, presumably. And then they've got a Farah, and then they've got a Symmetra. The big problem with their team right now is this Symmetra. It's not going to be very effective on the second point of Dorado. Now, this happens quite a lot where Symmetra players won't change. They'll take Symmetra for the first point defense, which is a very strong tactic, but then they'll just stay on Symmetra. And this person put down the uh, shield generator, which got completely taken out straight away by our Genji, and we just, well, we destroyed them. We went straight all the way to the end of the map, and they didn't really stop us at any point. That's because their team never changed from this. It remained the same for the entire game. What were they doing? This inability of that enemy team to swap cost them dearly. What they should have done is started looking at maybe just matching us up, or maybe swapping things out so Winston can work quite well the problem with Winston is he can get caught out of the position quite easily so Winston would be a much safer it'd be a, be a safer bet for that player to play a Reinhardt right now or even an Orissa but I would say go on to the Reinhardt the big issue we've got here though is this Symmetra player if everything else remains the same, Symmetra becomes a Mercy player starts pocketing the Farah. suddenly we've got support for that Farah player now because the only healing on this team is Anna. And Anna is a strong solo healer. In fact, she is the only healer I would take an, a, a, any day of the week to solo heal a team. But it, it's going to take a lot of skill off that player because they're going to have to be very accurate. They're going to have to use their grenades at the right time and all of that stuff. But it's going to be very difficult for that player because of this map. This is Dorado. This has got a lot of verticality. This means Pharaoh is going to be flying around. It means the tanks are going to be on the low ground. It's, it's just going to be a mess. It's going to be very hard for Anna to keep this team up. So it gives me a very good opportunity to just absolutely destroy destroy the Farah. And you can see I'm on fire because I destroyed the Farah. Every single time I see her, I kill her. It was very easy for me. So I'm taking out one of their plays straight away. So it's a 5v6 and the Symmetra can't really do anything unless she's point blank range. Genji's in their bat line harassing the Ana and they got absolutely ripped apart. And this is something which happens all of the goddamn time. You have to swap your team. You have to think what are the enemy doing? What can I do to change this? Now, I know, I know, I know, I know what you guys are going to say in the comments. Stai, it's great that you're telling us this. It's great that you're like, oh yeah, we should swap to this, we should swap to that. But you can't play all of the heroes. And I get that. I can't play all of the heroes. You know, I'm, I'm better on Soldier 76 and McCree than I am like on a Tracer. But sometimes I will swap to a Tracer because I'll see an opportunity to do it and I'll think, okay, I'm going to play this Tracer. And it works out. It might not be the best Tracer play, but it's enough to upset the enemy team, disrupt them, and, and like cause enough mental damage to them to cause them to lose the game. It's like Winston, right? Sometimes I'll play Winston in a dive comp. I'm not that great with Winston. A lot of the time, I overextend myself a little bit too much with Winston um, because I get a bit too like bloodthirsty. And I know that's not great play. However, I've been in a load of teams where that's worked extremely well because we've took the Winston and the Winston has just destroyed the enemy team because it's part of that dive comp. It's the component we needed. We did not need the Reinhardt. We did not need the Roadhog. So I swapped to the Winston and then we just win the game. That is what Overwatch is about until you get to the very highest levels of the game. It is easily about team comp and it is honestly easily, easily, easily about... Well, easily is not the right word. You just have to be calm. In the spawn, do not go crazy. Do not say, I want the Genji. And if you don't if you don't get it, don't just throw the game. Don't go, well, whatever, I'm playing Torbjorn because I don't care. You've got to play around this because you will get stuck at these levels of the game if you don't become flexible and if you don't become more intelligent about your team selections. Like, it really, really annoyed me yesterday, like I said, was the whole point of me making this video, where I was playing, I was winning a game, then losing a game, winning a game and losing a game. Losing those games, none of them were defeats because the enemy team were better than us. It was because our team refused to 
either build a proper team or somebody got so tilted because they couldn't play their main, they just didn't play the game. Overwatch is a game about flexing. It's a game about hero selection. It's a game about, well, being flexible. You have to think, what can I do at this moment in time which will destroy the enemy? I will go onto a Farah if I see the enemy have no hit scan. I'm not a great Farah player, but if they've got no hit scan, how the hell are they going to attack me? That's going to force them to change. It's going to make that Genji swap to a McCree or swap to a, you know, a Soldier 76 to try and deal with me. And maybe they can't play that hero very well. So that's me again damaging the enemy team. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a hugely complex issue. I hope this video just give you a bit of insight though into how I do this. I do need to do, I think, more concise guides on this just to show you guys how to I guess, more effectively build teams because it's very difficult because there's loads of different factors. You've got what... Uh, what heroes can your team play well, right? You've got what is the meta always in the back of your head. You've got uh, what heroes can I play well? What heroes do we need? What heroes are the enemy team playing? And it's different in almost every single game. You know, if they've got an exceptional Widowmaker, uh, Widowmaker then you sitting on the Reinhardt um, probably isn't the best plan because maybe you need to get a... I don't know, uh, a Winston or a Diva to get into a face instead because you're sitting there with your barrier up and she's just killing everybody around you. So it's not effective. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Salos and this is Unit Lost. This has been a very detailed video on how to build a team and basically how not to tilt in the spawn. Do not tilt in the spawn, guys. Have faith. Believe in your team. Don't think that you are the greatest player ever and that other guy who wants to play the same hero as you is going to be terrible because if you're at the same SR, then he's probably okay or she's probably okay at doing that. So don't worry about it. All right, guys, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Gaming. And also you can join the Discord, which is discord.gg forward slash Unit We are very close to 10,000 members. So make it so, ladies and gentlemen. I'll catch you on the next one. Toodaloo.